Greetings, deeply loved children of God, and welcome to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Washington, Iowa. I am Pastor Maureen Howard, and I greet you with great joy as we come together on this second Sunday after Epiphany to give God thanks and praise. A couple of our announcements is we extend our deepest Christian sympathy to Corrine Martin on the death of her brother-in-law, Robert Nur, whose funeral will be tomorrow. So, Corrine, our deepest sympathy to you and your family on uh, Robert's death. And we know when we surround you with the promise of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Today is Luther League, and we'll be gathering here at Emmanuel Lutheran between 11 and 12.30. We'll be uh, enjoying playing games together, and then pizza. We ask that you bring a dessert or a side dish to share. You may download our Emmanuel Lutheran Worship Bulletin at our website, luthwash, L-U-T-H-W-A-S-H dot org, and uh, worship with us using our liturgy. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
We begin with our worship liturgy. Hear God's love. We hear God's God's love love for the the world world and for us. us. Through Through forgiveness, forgiveness, scripture, scripture, preaching, preaching, liturgy, and song. Hear God's love. Holy God, open our ears to hear and our hearts to be transformed by Christ's words of love to and for the world. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace through the power and promise of Christ Jesus. Our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and the Spirit's reconciling peace. Amen. Let us together sing on Jordan's bank the Baptist cry, hymn number 249.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, also with, with you. you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and all who offer their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us together sing the hymn of praise, Gloria, on page 176 of the worship book. Let us pray. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, most merciful Redeemer, for the countless blessings and benefits you give. May we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly. Day by day, praising you with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now hear the word of God. The first reading is from 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went down, and he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called to Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. 
Then, the Lord, then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make both the ears of anyone who hears of it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew. Because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them, therefore I swore to the house of Eli that the iniquity of God's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is taken from Psalm 139, selected verses. Lord, you have searched me out. O Lord, you have known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. My days were fashioned before they came to be. How deep I find your thoughts, O oh God! How great is the sum of them! If they were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. Count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, the sixth chapter. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food. And God will destroy both one and the other. The body is not meant for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord, and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. 
Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not and you are, are not your own? For you were brought bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Let us together sing the gospel acclamation. Holy Gospel this second Sunday after Epiphany comes to us from St. John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, to you O Lord. Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. I am the firstborn and I tend to have those firstborn birth order traits. According to parents.com, in the article, Birth Order Traits, Your Guide to Sibling Personality Differences, firstborns are reliable, conscientious, structured, cautious, controlling, achievers, in the article, Dr. Michelle P. Maddenberg, a child and family therapist in White Plains, New York, says about firstborns, they often have an intense fear of failure. So nothing they accomplish feels good enough. My parents never put pressure on me. They didn't have to. I put the pressure on myself. I guess because I was smart 
and I strive for perfection, my parents expected that from me, which only added to my guilt. Because I knew I wasn't. I was far from being perfect. In fact, I had secrets. No, not murderous secrets, but kid secrets. I never kept a diary for fear of my secrets getting out. I grew up two blocks from Jericho Turnpike, a very busy road with numerous and numerous of street lights, with small strip malls and car dealerships that went all the way into New York City. At night, as I lied in bed, I could hear police sirens coming closer to the house on Jericho. And I would pull up the covers over my head in fear, for I knew they were coming for me. For I was guilty with secrets, unperfect thoughts and actions, childhood skeletons in the closets. After my grandpa died, my mom would comfortly say that Pop was now looking down upon us. No way did I want Grandpa or any other person in heaven watching every move I made, watching me in the bathroom, watching me in my bedroom, watching me on dates. For me, that was creepy, and I wanted no part of heavenly eyes, though beloved constantly watching me, knowing me, knowing the innermost me, the me I only knew. When it comes right down to it, don't we all have secrets? Things we don't want anyone to know about ourselves? Thoughts we say to ourselves we never share. Actions or omissions, mistakes, failures, our imperfections we not want others to know about. Aren't we all guilty? Scripture is the cold shower that wakes us up to reality. There is no such thing as secrets, for we are known. As the author of Psalm 139 poetically writes, Oh, Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. The psalmist unlocks the chains that hold our skeletal closets closed and tells us God knows us. There is no place we can go. There is no thought 
we can have. There is no action we can do that God does not know already. Knowledge, so intimate. God knows when our own DNA, our cells divide. God knows us better than we know ourselves. God knows the innermost you. And it's not creepy. It's not spying on us kind of knowing. The psalmist says that God's knowing is not just wonderful, but it's too wonderful. For the psalmist, there is a comfort that we are known in an all compensing in an all encompassing way by God. For in God we trust that there is nothing we do in thoughts or actions, no faults or failures that will cause God to walk away from us. Through God's almighty, everlasting grace, God cuts through, God sees past what we want to lock away and truly sees, truly knows you, knows the wonderful creation you truly are, formed, knitted together by God's love. God's loving kindness carries the knowledge of our frailties, our secrets, our imperfections, which we find so difficult to bear. God carries them close to God's own heart, a heart that beats in the chest of Jesus. Jesus is beginning his ministry of reconciliation and has started to call his followers. Nathaniel's been sitting underneath a fig tree. Was he eating lunch? Was he just resting under the shade of the tree? Or was he reading the latest book? We don't have a clue. But Jesus sees him. And in Jesus' heart, in God's heart, Jesus already knows Nathaniel. And of course, Nathaniel is surprised by this, but not for long. From Nathaniel knows Jesus' reference to seeing him underneath the fig tree. When Philip comes to him and says, come and see Jesus. For Nathanael knows in the book of Zechariah, when a neighbor is called under the fig tree, God's servant, God's branch, the branch of Jesse, the son of God, the Messiah, will come and remove the guilt, the sin of God's people. Immediately, Nathanael acknowledged Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus continues telling Nathanael he will see Jesus glorified on his throne when he conquers our guilt our sin on the cross. Through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, our secrets, our frailties, our sin are wiped away. Through Jesus' forgiving love, we are created anew created fearfully and marvelously and wonderfully. God knows 
you intimately. And God says to you, my beloved child, you are very good. Giving God praise, we follow Jesus, inviting others into God's all-encompassing, knowing, renewing love, which then sends us forth to live guilt-free today, tomorrow, and through eternity in the presence of Almighty God. Amen. Let us together sing the hymn of the day, O Morning Star, How Fair and Bright, hymn number 308. Let us together sing verses 3 and 4. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Guided by Christ, made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. After each prayer petition, I will conclude with, let us pray, and I ask that you respond with, have mercy, O God. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world, and for all servants of the gospel, 
that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made, that we serve as wise stewards of earth, our home. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters so they may come to know new life through you. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For police officers and firefighters, for attorneys and paralegals, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments, that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. We pray especially for peace here in the United States. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound, we pray especially for those we name before you now, in our hearts or spoken out loud. That God console all who suffer. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. For our neighborhoods and your people worshiping as Emmanuel Lutheran, that all who seek to know God are nourished by word and sacrament. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O O God. God. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, especially not Robert Nur, that their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Let us pray. Have Have mercy, mercy, O O God. God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you always, Margie. Aaron, the peace of Christ be with you always. The peace of Christ be with you always. During this time of social distancing, we continue to give God our thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, which is including the care of those in need. We invite you to mail your checks to Emmanuel Lutheran, We ask that you automatically withdraw through your account that you choose called Simply Giving or give online through the website of Emmanuel Lutheran, luthwash.org. We will now receive your tithes and offerings. Lord, you know us and you listen. You surround us behind and before, yet you see deeply from a distance. You discern all our thoughts from afar, neither nearness nor that distance can divide us. 
Let us pray. O oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. Let us give thanks for God's life-giving word. Let us pray. Holy God, light of the universe, teacher of truth, giver of goodness, we hear your word in the scriptures, proclaiming to us your wisdom, inviting us to follow your call. For speaking this word, we thank you, O oh God. We, we thank, thank you, you O oh God. God. Your word came among us in Jesus, our brother, who preached your righteousness, healed the sick, and revived the brokenhearted. For giving us this word, we worship you, O oh God. We, we worship, worship you, O oh God. God. By your spirit, bless all who receive this word, that upheld by the mystery of the body of Christ, we may be light for the world, revealing the brilliance of your Son, for sustaining us with your word. We praise you, O oh God. We, we praise, praise you, you O oh God. God. Blessed are you, holy God, around us, with us, and in us, now and forever. Amen. 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 Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom come. come. Your, your will be, be done, done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. And forgive, forgive us our sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Deeply loved, forgiven, marvelously made, wonderful, very good children of God. Receive God's blessing. Christ has no body but yours. No hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes in which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet in which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands in which he blesses all this world. Yours are the hands 
Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are Christ's body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us together sing our sending hymn. O oh Lord, now let your servant go, hymn number 313. love. We shall share Christ's love with our neighbors. Thanks be to God.